This is Gia Miller, and you are listening to Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin. Hello and welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We are part of the Impact Lounge. Very excited today because our guest is the current backstage interviewer for Impact Wrestling. Very happy to welcome to the show, Gia Miller. Gia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I'm very excited too. Hey, it's working. Hey, in case anyone anyone who's listening right now, we had a a little bit of trouble getting this uh, show uh, started, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad it's working now. And um, and uh, let's 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 get this done. Let's do this. So first question I want to ask. I, I saw on um I think it was Twitter. How's the how's the DDP yoga coming along? It is awesome. I have always wanted to try it, and I just never really got around to it. But I started it about a week and a half ago, and it is incredible. It really is life-changing. It is not a gimmick. It is 100%, like, it is awesome. Great, because I, I was thinking about doing it, and uh, and I saw, I saw that you were, you were injured. You were, What happened? I saw you had, that you had the picture of you in the wheelchair. Oh, yeah. So that was actually uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I've just encountered a string of back issues. Uh, even from before I started wrestling, I uh, I played sports for years and years and years, and um, I really we still don't even know what happened, but I all of a sudden felt such an excruciating pain that I ended up not being able to sit up or walk or really do anything. Um, and this was the night before my first uh, finals of college, and. So okay. they had to take me to the emergency room, and then I took my finals in a wheelchair. <laughs> so. Oh wow! Uh, oh, wow! Wow! So yeah, was, I, I hope you passed the finals. Though. I hope you did well in the finals. Yes, I did. I okay, did. I, I graduated go. with a with a three point nine. So I think I did. There you good. go. There you go. So uh, wheelchair or not, you 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 were passing that 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 final anyway. So. You better believe it. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Uh, so let's talk about Impact Wrestling. How did you uh, how did you land the job of a backstage interviewer? What what led to to you getting that position? Um, it, it really is one of those things. They say it a lot in the business of you have to be in the right place at the right time, and I was. Um, I have gone to school for journalism and creative media and theater, so it was something that I was always really passionate about, and I've always loved doing it. Um, and I also have a passion for professional wrestling. I'm a professional wrestler myself uh, okay. when I'm not an interviewer. And I went to the tapings in Atlanta uh, back before quarantine and the coronavirus all got crazy. Um, I went with my trainer, uh, who was Mike Jackson, who he's been on Impact before, the the old buck, as they yep. call him. And yep. uh, I, I went yeah. back I went with him and I made a network of people, started talking to uh, the the locker room leader herself, Madison Rain. Um, we hit okay. it off and she was so, so kind and asked me if I wanted to try out to be the backstage interviewer. I said, absolutely. And the rest is history. There you go. Now, you, you mentioned Mike Jackson, uh, and you mentioned that you're a wrestler. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that a little later. Um, but um, actually, I'm I'm a little older than you. I, I remember watching Mike Jackson in Georgia Championship Wrestling about 1980, 81, and uh, I I still can't believe he's wrestling today. And, yeah. Um, and uh, but we'll, we'll I know I know he was one of your trainers with George South, but we'll we'll talk about him um, uh, a little later. Uh, but but is the job permanently yours? Are you the permanent backstage interviewer, or do you have um, a contract with them? No, I'm not contracted. I am just I come back every time they ask me to come back, and uh, it's a job that I enjoy, and we seem to everybody seems to work well together. Uh, and so until I hear otherwise, uh, I am the backstage interviewer right now. Um, but there's no contract or anything. I just uh, I show up when they need me, 
and they've needed me uh, for the past couple ones. All right, there you go. Well, I hope hopefully they'll uh, present you with a contract uh, very soon because uh, I, I think you're doing a great job. Um, well, um, thank you. Watch. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so, so do you have a favorite person to interview? I know you've you've interviewed Moose. You, uh, you've interviewed uh, Ace Austin. Uh, do you have a, a favorite person uh, to interview? Oh gosh, see, and I haven't interviewed everyone, so it's kind of hard to judge. Um, I really love interviewing the women, um, just because it, their their interview style is very different. Um, okay. I, the the well, the team of Havoc and Nevaeh is what they're called in Impact Wrestling. Um, yeah, I, I loved interviewing them. They were they were super cool to to be around and felt like we we had a good vibe going. So they've been my favorite so far, and I hope I get to interview them again soon. So so like, how much work does does it go into preparing for uh, the numerous interview interviews that you have to do, and how many do you, do you have to do per taping? Um, I typically average around two per show. Uh, Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. Um, but so I'm typically one of the first people there in the morning uh, on taping days and one of the last people to leave at night. Uh, those are long days of lots of costume changes. Um, okay. But not, it, they give us a lot of creative freedom. I, uh, what the interview's going to be about, I kind of a rough ask them something like this. Uh, and I'll usually talk to the talent to say, like, hey, is there something that you want to say that I could maybe phrase my question in a certain way so you can segue into that? And um, so we we do a like It's a collaborative effort. And typically we get them in one or two takes. Uh, it, they're super smooth and, and easy. And it's really up to us. There's not a lot of, like over preparation it, you just kind of go with the moment and it's they're very organic and that's what i love about those yeah no you you, you have great chemistry with a lot of the people that that you interview i i think your interviews with moose are, are very entertaining because oh, it's it, yeah. it seems it's, it seems like he's trying to, to belittle you a little bit and but uh but i uh, know they're very entertaining and the interview with uh, diona Perazzo and when kylie ray came out that was that was a very good interview as well Oh yeah, those are fun. the The ones with moose with moose are very fun, uh, because he's so large. I help, but like feel like I'm cowering no matter what when he speaks. Um, but yeah, those are those are really fun interviews to do. So, so it's going to be an exciting time right now with all the with all the signings at Impact Wrestling. There must be a, a very a positive vibe in, in the uh, in the locker room and and going around in, in general at Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of new faces, and I feel like every set of tapings we've had, there's been more and more people uh, that I maybe have never had a chance to meet before or didn't know very okay. well previously. Uh, and yeah, so having having all the new uh, the new talent in the locker room is is really awesome. And a lot of a lot of our our former talent that was here before I was that I get to work with and and. and be around and everyone's super happy to be there it seems like so that positivity just kind of it spreads it spreads quick in our locker room absolutely well, well it, it's a great time to be an impact wrestling fan and they're, they're really uh they're really doing a great job right now and I, I i can't wait to see what the future holds for impact wrestling and they're doing an absolutely fantastic job um so you, you're the backstage interviewer. You mentioned that you're also a wrestler. Would you like to eventually transition from backstage interviewer to getting into the an Impact Wrestling ring? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I, I, that is something that is a goal of mine. Um, right now, I've, I've only been training for uh, well, less than a year, and I'm not really at that level yet, uh, but I hope that one day... Okay. Uh, that this relationship, you know, continues and uh, and that's something that we could explore. Um, but sure, yeah, that being a wrestler has been my my dream for, for forever. And that's absolutely one of my goals is to get in the Impact Wrestling ring. So, so, so say Scott Demore comes up to you and says, you know what, well, we're putting you on Explosion and you could pick any opponent you want to go one-on-one -on -one with here in Impact Wrestling. Who, who would you choose? Oh, gosh. Um, probably... 
either Madison Rain or uh, Havoc because I okay. feel like I, I, I know both of them very well. I feel like we would have good chemistry and uh, they also could lead me if, if <laughs> very well if I needed it, <laughs> which I would. Okay. Just just uh, be careful with, with Havoc. She could, get a little, she could get a little rough in the ring. So. Oh, yeah. yeah the, I'm, I'm watch, watch yourself with Havoc. Absolutely. Plus, you never know where Nevea is. Well, you might have to bring Madison Rain to watch your back, and you never know if uh, Nevea might interfere in that match. So, hey, I'd be but, down uh, to have the locker room leaner in my corner. There you go. There you go. It, it's it, well. It, do you think it's going to happen um, sooner or later? They'll, they'll ask you to get into the ring. Uh, I, I'm not going to say uh, okay. yes or no on okay. that. Okay. Just because just that's it. It would it would be much much in the future, and you just never know what might happen between now and then. Okay. There you go. There you go. So, so let's go back to the beginning. What what sparked your interest in becoming a professional wrestler? I watched it all growing up with my dad. Uh, it was something we bonded over, uh, and so it was always something that I thought was super fascinating, and I loved it. And even when there were times that maybe I wasn't as interested in it, I could always come back to it and be like, "Okay, here's what's happening." Like it was. It's a TV show that. I always say it doesn't have seasons. You can jump into it at any time, and you'll pretty much catch up super quick. Uh, it's, it's a great thing to introduce people to because even though there's a lot of history that you need to know, um, you can still jump in at any point. You don't have to start from the beginning. And uh, so I thought that was really interesting and fascinating. And I've played sports, like I said. And then when I got older, I got into theater. And I kind of made okay. that connection of like, wow, well, this is just athletic theater in a sense, part of it. And yeah. I, I really, it sparked a whole new love for it. And I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I, I want to do this. This is this is everything that I've ever wanted is, is something fun and intense. And it's a story. And I, I just really fell even more in love with it and set my heart on it. And that's what that's what I set out to do. So you said you used to watch it. Uh, um, so who were some of your favorites when, when you were watching? Were you watching? Were you a WWE fan, a WCW fan? Uh, who were who some of your favorites growing up? So I rem when I was younger, I didn't really have a concept of like brands or who was what. Okay. I had a lot of VHS tapes, but I actually watched a lot of stuff that was from before my time because I was born in 98. So I'm very young. And I missed a lot, <laughs> but I, I would watch things okay. from the early 90s and from the 80s because we had VHS tapes of it. And um, so some of my favorites, obviously, I, I loved Shawn Michaels. Oh, my gosh. Anytime he was he was on, I, I was in front of the TV. Um, also loved Trish Stratus, of course. OK. And uh it, when 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 people ask my favorite, it's always 100%. It's China. She was my absolute favorite. She's still my there favorite, and I, like I will I will stick by that till the day that I die. There you go. Very very talented wrestler China was. I, I you I, you know I, I feel old. You said you were born in 1998. I <laughs> I'm a lot older than you. So I, I, uh, I like I said I I remember um, watching Mike Jackson in 1981 wrestling for Georgia uh, Championship Wrestling. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking speak, speaking of Mike Jackson, so you trained with Mike Jackson, and I I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that you also trained with George South. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, uh, I so, began training. Oh, I'm sorry. Continue. No, 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 I was going to say, so just uh, tell me a little bit about uh, training with George South and Mike Jackson. Sure. Uh, so I, tr I started training with George South uh, up in Charlotte, North Carolina. I went to Charlotte for a summer strictly to train. Um, I lived with my best friend's family and uh, went to training two or three days a week. Uh, it was him, uh, Caleb Conley, and Jake Manning. And it was all like very different types of training. And I was only there for two months. And then I had to go back to Alabama and I had to go back to school because it was my senior year. And George said, well, you need I want you to continue training. I'm going to set you up with somebody. And he made a bunch of phone calls and got in touch with Mike and said, hey, there's this girl. Can you train her? 
I've been working with her for two months. And Mike said, well, can she have a match? And George apparently said, yes, if she's got somebody <laughs> to lead her. And so the first day I met Mike, I thought I was showing up just to train. And I had my first match that day. And it was a... Uh, it was a roller coaster of an experience. So a lot of my training was was matches from there on out in rural Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi. So it was a uh, it was an experience that was very beneficial. It was a different type of training experience because there are definitely things that you you learn from matches that you can't learn in training, like just crowd interaction and like you can you can try making that when there's no crowd, uh, like in a training situation, but it's just not the same. And so I, I learned a different type of, of, of training that it was very unique. Um, but Mike Jackson was also my tag partner for a little bit. We did a lot of mixed tag matches. Okay. Um, okay. But it was, it was awesome. They, they both did a very good job of like teaching me so much in a very small amount of time that has been very beneficial so far. So, so tell me about the first match when, when you were told uh, you're going to, you're going to be having your first match. Uh, what, what's going through your head when you first find out and then what's going through your head as you're about to walk through the curtain and hit the ring for the first time? Well, uh, I, I had a brief moment of, Oh my gosh, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> and <laughs> And then I had, the next thought was, well, will I ever be ready for it? What better time than now? I'm given an opportunity. Yeah. Why would I not take it? Uh, and, you know, the, the 20 people in the American Legion, it, if it's terrible and they say you don't need to have another match, that's okay. I'll, I'll move from there, but I might as well try. And um, we, we called a bunch of stuff. I had it. I had it move for move in my head what we were doing. I was ready. I was excited. Um, and it, there was never, other than that first moment of uh, I'm not ready, there was never a moment of fear after that. Uh, it was just pure excitement. And I remember being right there at the edge of the curtain waiting for my music to start and just being like, it, it felt surreal, like it wasn't even happening that after two months I was having a match and I remember thinking to myself like this is it this is the beginning this is where it starts and what I do from here on is is up to me so are, are any of those matches on on YouTube by chance because I, I did look for match there was one match on YouTube that I watched uh, last night uh, it was against uh, the Mississippi Queen at Spring Fling, Spring Fling 2020 uh, it was a very good match uh, but are any of those matches with Mike Jackson on YouTube by chance um, there are a few, um, I'm trying to think, but they're part of like the whole show is on YouTube. So I might not okay. okay. it anywhere. I just like, they sent me a link to it and then I had to fast forward to the very end where we were. Um, but I didn't even know that that match was on YouTube. So I guess I'll have to go watch it now. Um, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was very, uh, very good match. It definitely showed great potential in that match. Uh, but, um, yeah, I would love to see the other matches with, uh, with Mike Jackson because I, I, uh, Mike Jackson is like in the ring, he's like smooth as silk. The guy is just incredibly talented. Uh, but I, I would love, I would love to see those matches if they're available, like on YouTube somewhere. Absolutely. They are on YouTube somewhere. I'll, uh, I'll okay. look up those links and send them your way. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, how, how long have you been wrestling for? Was it, um, uh, so it was October of, 2019 so less than a year um and it was just i've probably had 15 matches uh so i'm i'm very green especially once once quarantine and 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 covid started kind of put a big uh wrench in the progress there but um, yeah i know but i did get this opportunity at the very same time so I am not complaining in the least bit. Yeah, no, it all it all worked out, and this whole COVID thing will be. I know they're having, uh, I think they're having uh, matches in in Indiana now in front of crowds, so it, it's mm-hmm. slowly getting back, and then hopefully it'll it's, this whole thing will be over soon. They'll find a vaccine, and everyone can go back to being normal again. But um, yeah. until then, yeah. 
so so you've been wrestling since 2019. You said you had 15 matches. Would you have a favorite match yet, or 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 not yet, or not yet? Since it's only been 15 matches. Well, I do have one that was that was probably my favorite um, so far, and it was against the Mississippi Queen, but it was uh, it was a different place. Um, okay. We I was I was wearing new gear that night. Uh, we had a bunch of new moves that I'd never done before that we were trying out. And uh, we were super excited. We had an awesome match put together. And about halfway through, uh, it's honestly kind of funny, and this is why it was my favorite. Um, how about halfway through, I had a wardrobe malfunction. And the top, my, my gear top came undone at the neck. And okay. she she noticed before I did, so she grabbed me and slammed me down, and then was acting like she was choking me, but was fixing my my gear. And oh, I was okay. like, I was like, did my gear come undone? She was like, yeah, girl, I got you, no problem. <laughs> and it could have been terrible, but it was so funny. And so, like, I guess you know, women taking care of each other, and you know, yeah. understanding that like if you don't look good, then I don't look good. It, it's a, yeah, it's yeah. a concept and she she's a very nice girl and and took care of me and so I, that's why it's my favorite is just that that small Dang. moment there all right i'm glad she took care of you that's uh, that's that's uh, great stuff man uh so so you mentioned madison rain would, would that be your dream match against madison rain oh my gosh yes absolutely okay. that would be a, a a good dream match to have she's been a uh, Impact Wrestling for a long time, and you know, um, locker room leader, and uh, yeah, that's that's a great dream match to have uh, against Madison Rain. Uh, so, so you mentioned COVID nineteen. Do you have to go into isolation when when you're not doing the backstage interviews? Well, what kind of safety precautions do you, do you have to go through for Impact Wrestling? Um, so they do take every precaution necessary. We are checked at the door uh, when we show up for tapings every morning. Uh, everyone has to talk to the uh, the EMTs and doctors, get your temperature taken. Um, and even we've gone as far as to get tested right before tapings just to make sure. Um, okay. But we, I, we all do our best. Of course, it, this is a difficult time for everybody, especially people not being able to wrestle yeah. as much as they normally do. So having to take on other jobs and things like that. So I do have another job outside of Impact. Uh, and, but even when I'm there, my mask is on at all times. I am social distancing okay. always. Uh, there you go. they, they don't pressure us into, into doing anything, but they do encourage, you know, Hey, please take these necessary precautions, uh, to keep yourself safe and to keep everybody else safe. And for the most part, everybody does. And, uh, I think that's why we've all knock on wood managed to save, to stay healthy. Yep. I'm knocking on wood right now. Stay up, stay up, stay up. So let me ask. I I saw on Twitter that it's it's you mentioned that you're part of the Safe Wrestling uh, Collective. So tell me a little bit about your role and uh, what you are working to accomplish with uh, the Safe Wrestling Collective. Uh, so I am one of the many representatives that's part of this uh, collective of people who are working with promotions and schools and wrestlers and fans, everybody, everyone in the wrestling community, we're working with uh, everyone to ensure that everyone feels safe, they feel represented, they feel taken care of. Uh, and if something does happen, we are resources for anyone who needs them or wants them to take the next steps in maybe if they needed to get therapy or if they needed to take legal action. Uh, we, I, of course, am not a mental health professional. I'm not a harassment professional. I, but I do have training in all of these things, and I do have certifications that give me the proper background in order to help people. I'm not the end-all, be-all, but I can put you on the right path. So that's my role is working with uh, promotions in different areas, whether it's the Midwest or the South. Um, just kind of helping okay. implement policies and and showing that we care and they care and everyone's working together and it's really awesome to be a part of something like that. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, so let me ask. So, for anyone who might be being harassed or discriminated against, uh, and they're afraid to speak up, what 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 advice would, would you give to that person? I would say to find someone that you can trust. You you have to find someone. It, it is so hard to go through those things alone. And I'm not saying that you have to go to a therapist immediately. I do advise it. I think it's good. Everyone needs therapy, even if you haven't gone through something. Um, I'm not saying you have to take legal action, but you need someone with you so that you are not alone and you aren't battling it by yourself because that battle is so much more difficult when you are doing it alone. Absolutely. Well, well, I applaud you for 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 that work and and um, keep doing what you're doing with the Safe Wrestling Collective. I I, I did a little research on it and it seems uh, to be very very important. And um, again, um, keep up the great work with uh, the Safe Wrestling Collective. Thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. So let's um, move on. I, I have I wrote down five names, five Impact Wrestler names, and. Is it okay if I read them off? Actually, I have six. If I read them off and you can give me maybe a, a few words on, on how you feel about them. Is that, sure. is that okay? Sure. All right. So uh, we spoke about him a little bit before, but I'm going to say his name again. Uh, Moose will be the first name. I, he's incredibly talented. I, I can't I can't take that away from him. He is – now, if you, if you ask him, he is the greatest wrestler in the world. He is a wrestling <laughs> god. <laughs> But he is an incredibly talented individual. Uh, I also have a soft spot for football players, so I love that about him. Uh, and he's, he's, he's good to work with. I, I love working with him. Uh, he's always very nice to me, even when he's not nice to me on camera. All right. All right. There you go. Uh, Rosemary. Oh, my gosh. An absolute delight. We shared Oreos together after tapings once, and it was one of the highlights of my entire life. Wait, wait, Rosemary eats Oreos? Is that today? Yes, I we, gotta, we might have okay. to keep that on the down low. At least one of the Hive members eats Oreos. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, Kiara Hogan. I'm afraid of her, but also she's a vibe. In 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 the words of the kids, she's a vibe. I, uh, I love her. I think you, that she's. She's very, very talented. But everybody is. I'm going to say that about everybody because everyone on the Impact roster is so immensely talented. Absolutely. She's, Absolutely. she's awesome. Uh, I think she's very, very much uh, authentic and herself. And I love that about her. Uh, Johnny Swinger. Actually, every show I've ever wrestled on, Johnny Swinger has also been on that show. Wow. Okay. Yep. <laughs> So we have a long history, and I hope that one day I can be so involved in a character that I don't even have to think about what I'm about to say. I can just rattle off immediately, and it's going to be gold like he he does. Yeah, he's doing a great job. He's uh, I mean, I used to watch him in ECW, um, but but he's doing a, he's doing a great job right now. Uh, he's so entertaining. Um, and the Wrestle House that that was fantastic. Well, what's your opinion on the Wrestle House, by the way? I, I thought it was fantastic. So fun to watch. I thought it was a very unique approach at a different side of a, a niche. It, it really is a niche, and, and Impact has always done things that are niche, and they're different, and they're unique, and I love that. Uh, I compare uh, wrestling to reality TV all the time, so the fact that it's a reality TV show within wrestling is even better, and I think it's hilarious, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, are you are you gonna sh eventually show up at the Wrestle House? I sure hope so. <laughs> okay. Season two, All right, baby. we'll see. We'll see. You never know. You never... Okay, we got two more names. Uh, Chris Bay. Chris Bay. If you haven't checked out his uh, his music, I absolutely encourage it. Uh, his song "Lonely" is one of my favorite songs right now. I listen to it on a loop at the gym. But also, okay. incredibly talented wrestler. Okay. And last but not, le but not least, and, and I, I think you know uh, this gentleman very well, uh, Ace Austin. An absolute scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I agree. I agree. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he's, I, he's, he's very talented. Uh, a young guy. He's got a lot to learn, uh, but he has a lot of potential to be not only the future of Impact Wrestling, but the future of wrestling itself. And, uh, and now, how he does it, that's up to him, and he he has okay. to sleep 
knowing knowing all that he's done. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was but, a little disappointed because I was I was kind of hoping that he was um he would have won he was going to win the Impact um, World Title. Uh, of course, we know Eddie Edwards won it, but I I was rooting for Austin. I was hoping Austin would have uh, would have won, but uh, it, it's in the future. He'll he'll have that title in the future. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. The future. There you go. The future. The future. Now, could you see yourself like aligning with him, aligning with Ace Austin, walking down to the ring and being a part of the, um, his uh, his faction with uh, Madman Fulton? Oh, sure. I listen. I like to test my limits, and uh, especially if he's in a he's in a position of power. Why wouldn't I, I align myself with that? Maybe that's my heel side coming out. But um, there you go. Sure. Absolutely. All right, so one more question, and then uh, then I'll let you go. Uh, where do you see yourself five years from now in the world of professional wrestling? Five years from now, um, I I hope to be conveniently in a similar position as Ace Austin. He is also five years into his career, and well, a little over five years now, uh, five years into his career, and he's doing very well from himself. And I hope to be in a similar position. But obviously, in my own right, uh, I hope to have improved and maybe have made that transition that we talked about from interview to uh, to wrestler. We'll see how it goes. Oh, we'll see how it goes. Well, Gia, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you. And if if you ever want to come back and, and do another podcast, uh, you're always welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. My, pl- my pleasure. And, and keep up the great work. You're doing a fantastic job as the backstage interviewer. And, and as you said, and, and as I said earlier, I, I really do hope that uh, it does transition into a, um, uh, a wrestling role. And, and we do see you in an Impact Wrestling ring uh, one day. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Well, this has been Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Again, I want to thank my guest, uh, Gia Miller. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.